Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is for you. My name is Eva Marie Everson. I'm the president of Word Weavers International. I'm also the director of Florida Christian Writers Conference, which is coming up pretty soon. It's like right on us. Today is September the 30th. I had to look down. I don't even know. The days are just running into each other. This is not about the Florida Conference. This is uh, an edition of Eva Marie and the Experts. And my expert today is none other than Tamara Alexander. I am so excited. You have no idea what we've been through to make this happen, including me totally forgetting that we were supposed to do this earlier this week or last week, I believe it was. Let me tell you just a little bit about Tamara. She is one of today's most popular writers of inspirational historical romance. She lives in Nashville, Tennessee with her husband, not far from the Southern mansions that serve as the backdrop for many of her critically acclaimed novels. Now, I just asked her, how many do you have? And she said 17, she's working on the 18th. We'll find out more about that. And she has a total of five series and one standalone. Thank you so much, Tamara, for joining us today. Thank you. It's so nice to be here with you. And I'm just so glad this worked out after some hiccups. So on my yeah, end, yeah. So thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, we, we did. We had some illnesses and then we just, well, one of us just totally didn't write it on the calendar. And I'm not saying no, who, but. No worries. Me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, let me just say this, and I haven't even said this to you before. But I am Irish by uh, predominantly by descent. There's all kinds of stuff in there, you know, but I'm Irish by descent. And uh, if my hair hadn't turned gray, you'd see it as uh, you'd see me as a redhead. <laughs> so um, when I was reading one of your books, um, and uh, let me think, let me think, let me think, which one was it? Um, to Win Her Favor. That was when I actually discovered how hard, how difficult life was for the Irish immigrants when they came into this country, I up until that time had no idea. Right. So, I, and you know, we can learn so much about history, obviously from historical fiction, but what I really wanna to talk to you about first is how do you do all this research that you do for your books? Mm, you know, I love history. I've always loved reading history and what I do specifically, and, and I'll just take it kind of more at a closer view from what I write specifically is I get with the, I get with the mansions, I get with the curators and the local historians to Franklin and, and to Nashville. And I work with them. I work with period documents, um, mm -hmm. which I am so blessed to be able to have all of this or most of, most of it right there at my fingertips because of a lot of so I stand on the shoulders of a lot of people who <laughs> I mean we're talking back into the 18th and 19th century who have mm -hmm. curated and kept and guarded you know that's amazing thing. it is amazing yeah and, you know, and I, and I I hope I hope one day I can hug them and thank them because my, my husband often says you do realize what a gift this is and I I mean just to be able to write about these mansions and the real people and the real yeah. history because we know it and it hasn't it hasn't you know history doesn't change uh, there are certainly different perspectives to history as we know you know mm -hmm. from different writers. Um, but basically I get, I dive in, I spend about a year researching and reading. So um, if I'm writing another series, um, my next series say, and I'm on the second or third book. So the story world of my current series has been established at night for fun. That's what I do is I read history. I read history books, um, documents that were written back in that era, either with um, just life and how life was back then, or specifically, it could be a specific issue um, that maybe I'm dealing with in my book too, that I mm -hmm. want the perspective of someone back then. So, um, so that's basically, and then I'll, and then I'll just prep and um, make lots of notes. And so much of my stories spring from real history. And that's what I love, uh, especially yeah. mansion novels, um, the Belmont, Belmede and Carnton novels. Uh, it's just straight from history, which again, I, I love writing. What, what sparked that in you, do you think? What, where did that come from? How did you know, like, okay, I'm not supposed to be writing contemporary romance. I'm supposed to be writing historical romance. Historical romance. Two things I would say is my very first book, um, I dreamed the opening to. 
I, it was as clear as day. This was rekindled um, from Fountain Creek Chronicles. Again, very first book. And it was, a, uh, it was a man on horseback and he had been gone for a while. Again, I'm telling you only what I know from the dream and I didn't really know what he was doing, but he went to a cabin, nobody was there. He went on to town and when he's in town, he looks across the way and sees a funeral, but only two people are at the funeral. And he's thinking, what kind of life, you know, pitiful life did someone live right. that only two people would be there? And then all of a sudden, in, in his dream, the woman turns and it's his wife. And he waits until she is gone. She and the person that she's with are gone. And he goes over there and looks down at the name on the cross, at the that rough-hewn cross, at the grave marker, mm -hmm. and the name is his name. Wow. So that's how that story started. And of course, that was that was in Colorado. We lived in Colorado at the time, and it had a very historical feel to it. And then the second thing is the the earliest age I can trace is age nine. My family and I, minus my dad, my dad stayed home to work so the rest of us could go apparently, um, but we went um, to Germany. It was my mom um. and my brother and my grandmother and me and my aunt and uncle, um, my mother's sister, they were stationed, he was stationed in Frankfurt, Germany, okay. and their two children. So the eight of us traveled Ooh. around in a Volkswagen bug. No. I got the back cubby hole. My brother and my mother and my <laughs> grandmother got the back seat. And then uh, Julia and Fred got the front. And then the kids, apparently, you know, that was pre seatbelt days. They just rode wherever they Oh, wanted. my gosh. So we went over there to see them. But one day we were, um, and we toured some of the castles of Europe along uh -huh. the river. Again, I'm only nine years old. And I mean, I... I'd always loved reading, but this is where that history spark took deep root in me. And I think I just started reading yeah. everything. We were touring a castle and we were headed down into, um, into the belly of, of the castle, if you will. And I was running my hand along those stone walls. They were kind of damp and cold yeah. and you know, yes. that rough stone. And I just remember thinking, I wonder, I wonder who lived here. I wonder right. what their life was like. And in America, we look, woo, that's 200 years old. Woo. And then yes. you go to Europe and you're like, we are such a baby country. We're right. We are. We are. When you stand, you know, or walking through things that are 13th and 14th, 12th century. So it's just yes. fascinating. So those are, those are the two things that um, as far as younger, where that, that love of history was cemented. And then also how I think God kind of guided my writing to historical fiction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now I want to get to this really difficult question. And that is, what happens if you're asked to rewrite history? <laughs> And you've been asked to rewrite history. <laughs> yes. Um, you know what? Um, number one, and just in short, you don't. Uh, you don't. If you're a lover of history and um, if you really honor the people who lived back then. Um, but I did. Yeah, I did have that experience with with um, with Colors of Truth, which is one of the Carnton novels. It's the second full length Carnton novel, third book in the series. Um, but my publisher at that time came and asked me. Um, and it was during 2020, that famous yeah. year. Um, and they said, you know, some of the stuff, some of the historical aspects are not going to sit well with readers. Um, yeah. We've got a lot of upheaval, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I remember I was on a Zoom call sitting right, right at this table. And, mm -hmm. thinking, um, and I, was, I was waiting to hear what was coming. And they had had two readers read it and um, offer a lot of feedback. And so they basically wanted things changed. They wanted um, a lot of the history, the authentic history to the freed men and women from that era to be removed. Um, they wanted um, everyone to speak all the same. They wanted the same education level among right. all. It was just... And they just wanted the history changed. And again, working so closely with curators, with historians, um, mm -hmm. to get this history correct and knowing, knowing full well that a nation that forgets where she has been and what got her here and what she has been through, as we well know, will soon I mean, sure. she will repeat that or yeah. right or worse. Yes. Um, so, and I just said, you know, so I, I just said, no, I can't do that feeling that, you know, they will say, well, okay, we'll work something else around or something, or maybe delay the book. They had already delayed it twice, but they just said, oh, well, then we're canceling it and we're canceling the next book in the series too, if you don't. And I thought, mm. wow, okay. But you know, a year earlier, 
um, even Marie God had dealt with me on um, authenticity, mm-hmm. on telling the truth. Yes. I was leaving for a trip. And um, it was in 2019, in April of 2019, with my daughter. My daughter and I had planned a trip with another group, and we had been looking forward to this forever. Well, I had a book due about three or four months after that, um, after that trip. And I, my dad had, um, was in the last stages of Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, I, I was really torn about whether to go on that trip any, anywhere mm-hmm. or not. But he, you know, I it was decided that I would go. So I'm, I'm literally an hour from leaving the house. I'm throwing everything together and packing. And um, I'm not where I want to be on the book, but I'm just like, I know I can get there. I've got all my notes. Blah, blah, blah. Well, um, the publisher asked, where are you on the book? <laughs> oh, you're laughing because we know, we've all been asked this, right? We have all been asked this. And, and I said, Define where? <laughs> I know, I know, and you know, and you know, and the, and the phrase is, of, oh, it's going great. It's yeah, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, come to mind. It's like, I'm struggling. And <laughs> my dad, I'm going on this trip that I probably shouldn't be going, but I'm, you know, but I've already paid for it and I need to go, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so I tell them, um, you know, I tell them it's, you know, it's going, it's going okay, not great, but I will get there. And they ask, how many words do you have so far? Oh, gosh. oh Kelly, what <laughs> specifics you're saying? <laughs> Because little, little did I know. So I tell them and I tell them I have more than what I had. Cause in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going to count my notes and I'm going to count the summary parts that I already have, you know, that rolling. It's not really a lie. It's well, a lie. Is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I know that's what you're thinking. I'm right. Yeah. yeah. I'm giving, what does Robin Lee Hatcher say? So I'm giving the truth scope. And you're like, right. No, yes. you're. You're lying. Yeah, you're, you're lying. lying. Yeah. <laughs> you're lying. And I thought, but in my mind, how we reason. And as soon as you have to start reasoning, oh my goodness, has the Lord not dealt with me on that um, it, in that situation and since? As soon as you have to start thinking, how do I answer this? That should be a huge red flag to avoid. Right. Is um, so I did, and they said, would you send us the manuscript before you get on the plane? <gasps> To us and we'll see where you are we'll help you with it we understand you're in a difficult time constraint with your dad this is a brutal time blah 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 um so at that point you know of course i say well okay i i just i gave up not that much done and i lied to you and this is and the reason they had asked is another one of their writers had done this the year before mm-hmm. and had um and they said we have learned from you writers that y'all do give the truth you stretch the truth <laughs> and they said you you do this for a living and yeah. sometimes it bleeds over which is not which is not a um that's not a good thing no um, and it, but it is true it is true about especially about fiction writers because we sure. we tend to embellish you know and and we Absolutely. don't mean to in our mind it's often bigger than it is <laughs> that's exactly it really it. is and that's and exactly. Even my, my, my family call me on this constantly. It's like, oh. was it really, you know, 10 feet tall or was yeah. it? Like- or as funny or as exciting. Did your breath right. really just extinguish right. from yes. your lungs? Or what? Yes. Because you say things like that. You're like, I literally stopped breathing. <laughs> and you're like, did you, did, no, you you really, did you really probably not? But the thing was, even where I was going on that trip, I was about to get on a trip. And I was going with 28 other women to the Holy Lands, to Israel for my first time. Oh. Do you not think that the Lord God, creator of heaven and earth, Yahweh, yeah. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, they met <laughs> me yeah. at every turn and oh, yes. just continued. I mean, I call it um, a... I call it a breaking trip because there was so much that would have been broken anyway if this had not have happened. But it was just my awareness of sin and my sinful nature that we will, every one of us will struggle with. Yes, yes, we are redeemed. Yes, we are justified in Christ and sanctification is the journey. But oh, what a struggle with sin nature that we have. But that also then, I mean, so, so, so let's Mm -hmm. move forward um, to that moment on that Zoom call. And I thought, seriously, this is what we've come to. Nothing within me wavered. And I just said, Okay. Okay. All right. 
because God had already answered that for me a year ago. It's like, yes. you tell the truth, you speak the truth, and I'm not going to rewrite history. I'm not going to mm -hmm. honestly take away the struggle from the people who went right. through Who lived it, that yes. Would be cheapening. Yes. That would be cheapening what they sacrificed, whether they were willing to sacrifice it or it was taken mm -hmm. from them. It would cheapen their, their life. And uh, so I said no, and they held true to their word and they canceled both books and then I had about a month before the book before the book released to talk about a major crash course in indie publishing which yes. um, Angie Hunt helped me so much um, Rainey. she's they so wonderful they're so marvelous and Ken <laughs> Rainey helped me with covers and um, it was like oh my word we have got to plow people so and they met me there and um, I got to tell you it was um, it was God you know God just meant so much for good and so much good has come out of that. So, so the book I'm writing right now is unfortunately not Carrington three, because during that time, right when that book was being canceled um, and, and I, and I had started Carrington three, then another opportunity came with focus on the family. Oh. Jerry Jenkins called. And when Jerry Jenkins called, you, you answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a good friend. I know. Hello. <laughs> It's like he, well, in my case, he barely knows me. Why is he calling? Why me? is he calling me? Yes. So, but anyway, he, um, he works, of course, very closely with Focus on the mm -hmm. Family and they are starting a fiction line. And they said, and he said, I thought of you. And of course, I'm thinking, why did you think of me? And he never said why, but, um, but he, he said, I thought of you for the fiction line um, and want you and want to know if you want to be one of the three authors. Um, to start that line and um, and those would be the contemporary stories though and I say but I've always wanted to write a contemporary in fact mm -hmm. I had pitched a contemporary years back to my to Bethany House my publisher um, for two or no three series mm -hmm. and um, and they very rightly uh, very rightly mm -hmm. even said you know because I think I was on my third book and I was like my friends are writing chiclet and they're writing contemporary women yeah and stuff. fun and I'm just writing historical and they said you know Tammy what stay with it stay and build your readership build your readership mm -hmm. and yeah. that was such great advice I'm not saying you can't write wide and you know but for a writer starting out to get your identity to get yes. that to get those stories and who you are as a right. writer to that readership and then and then just and then just deliver what they want which was historical fiction for me Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, so um, uh, Jerry said, and I'll be the substantive editor. So let me tell you more about the, about the plan. I was like, done, yeah. done. I said, I'm good. Where do I sign? You know, yeah, give me that pen. <laughs> you know, I work with Jerry Jenkins and, and it has been a wonderful experience. So I'm just finishing that book, um, which um, is, um, it takes place, uh, of course, current day. Well, actually it's 2019. It's actually mm -hmm. 2019 and then ends, um, it, and then and it ends right right at December of 2020. I know I don't want to read about COVID anymore. I don't want my fiction. I don't want math. No. Uh, no. Please don't do that to me. So it worked out with the story really well for me to do that. But um, as I tell readers, it does have a historical thread in it because uh, it's about man and woman having a troubled marriage. Um, he ends up buying um, this this antebellum home for her as a peace offering after he has done something he should not do shame. and um, <laughs> shouldn't do, shame, shame. And um, she does not want the house. She's an interior mm. decorator, more of a contemporary designer, does not want this, but nevertheless, it is hers. And then um, she finds out something that he does one day and um, she is redecorating um, the house and she takes a sledgehammer left over from one of the workers. I mean, goes at their wedding picture first and just annihilates that and then just starts starts in you know in into the walls except on her third swing the mallet the the sledgehammer goes through the wall and and she finds a hidden room back Ooh. in the 19th century so then through the history of this home and what she finds in that room um she comes to closer faith in christ and then she reaches a point of what does she do about her marriage um yeah. and um so anyway so but that's so i love and but i loved writing i loved writing the contemporary part but the yes. historical just i naturally bleed that out i, I just i, I yes love yes i i totally get that i i, I want to to comment on one thing that how God has been dealing with me too. If I say, um, 
you know, if I was to say, you know, Tammy called me today and actually it was a text, you know, that even that God is saying, you know, it, it's like, and I'll, and I'll correct myself. And I'll say, actually right. it was a text, you know, because right. even in those things, God is correcting me to say, no, you tell the truth all the time, the truth, the truth, the truth. Right. And, and I don't know where you're from originally, but I'm, I'm from uh, the low, the low country of Georgia near the Savannah area. Oh, I'm from Atlanta. Okay. So, um, and, and I'm going to guess we're about the same age. I may be older, um, but I was part of the desegregation of the South. And I, I've said to my son-in-law, the bravery, the bravery of the boys and girls and the men and women in that era, don't yep. ever take that for granted. You are where you are because they were so brave yep. to do some of the things that they did that we, we really couldn't comprehend because we were children. You know, we were just, they, they said, oh, you're being bust over here. Okay, here we go. You know, and we didn't know, we heard the, the chatter, but I have shared with him a story that will stay with me the rest of my life. In my hometown, we had the white pool and then we had the colored pool and the colored pool was like a small pool that was about the size of, you know, a pool that you would see at a hotel where ours was almost Olympic size. It was huge, right? It had a, a high board and a low board and, and, and it, was, it was quite grand. And then of course the laws were passed that you could not do that anymore. And I'll never forget the day where all, all of our little white heads are bobbing up and down in the, in the water. And these four young black men, it sounds like what happened in, in uh, North Carolina, doesn't it, at Woolworth? But it wasn't. These four young black men walked out of the men's changing area and stepped into the pool because now they had the right to do it. And we all just, just immediately went to the edges of the pool and just like, we just held on because we, like, what's happening? What's, you know, what do we do? Mm -hmm. And they stood in the shallow end for maybe five or 10 minutes. That was it. And then we were like, okay, well, nothing bad has happened. And so we all just started swimming and, you know, everybody was like, well, just, just go back to normal. And we right. did. And then after a moment, they got up and they walked away. And I honestly don't ever remember it happening again. But, but I said to my son-in-law, the bravery oh, of yeah. those young men to do that. They could not have been more than 15, 16 years old. How right. brave they were. And, exactly. and this is why you can do some of the things that you do today. Mm -hmm. You know, this is why things are different. And when, when, when we talk about you know, Black Lives Matter or any of those things. And, and of course, you know, and we always say every life matters and it does. Um, but we cannot forget exactly. what was happening in the 60s, what was happening in the 50s, what was happening in the 40s, even on up into the 70s. You know, these were, these were the changes that were being made. And if we try to pretend it never happened, we have wronged the people who bravely walk yeah. through that era. Amen. I, I totally, totally agree with you on that. I'm so glad you did what you did. So what's next for you is obviously this book with focus. Yes, with, with focus. And one thing I was just going to share too is something when I was a little girl, very much that, that, um, that situation for you was I, I remember a biracial couple walked into church one day and the church just fell silent. I must not have been more than seven or eight. Yeah. And the church just fell silent because that, I mean, and, and we lived, you know, yeah. in, right. And, and I remember mom and dad after church that day, they said the ground at the foot of the cross is level. I that love is, that. They are, they are, have every right to be together and are great together and it's fine. Yes. And yet other families left, left the church. Yes. And yet, so I, I just, I learned at a very young age, but I was just so, but I felt that same, um, that same pride in them. I was like, oh, but, but yet I was so sorry they had to have that struggle, but yeah. Yeah. So and yeah, um, but, that, that is, that is what the goodness in life comes from is struggle. And, 
Yes, exactly. You know, childbirth exactly. is struggle, but look, <laughs> we get at the end of it. You know? <laughs> but yeah. people, yeah, so yeah. So for the people who, and, and again, we stand on their shoulders. Um, yes, I just, I, I never want to do anything to dishonor, to denigrate what they went through, what they did to weaken what they yes. did. That would yes. be so wrong. So, um, but yes, the focus book is what I'm working on next. And actually I'm working on, uh, and then I'll dive back into Carnton three and do that one. And just last night I was writing a couple of proposals for a publisher. So we'll Yay. see where those yeah. go. Yeah. But I, I would still love, I'd still love to do the indie readers have been asking I've, I've done a couple of talks on lessons I've learned um through yes. novels and the spiritual side of writing and they said why don't you put some of that in a book and I was like okay so well so I'm kind of I'm working on that as time allows so I just I feel so blessed to be able to um to have both worlds I love the indie but I also love partnering with with a publisher I really absolutely do. I 100 percent yeah. agree okay so how do readers find you? How do our, our Word Weavers, because this is predominantly for Word Weavers International, how do we find you? Well, first of all, thank you for what you do and thank you for how you have grown that organization. I mean, just all over, it's just exploded. So thank <laughs> yeah. you. Yes, all it did. <laughs> all the mentoring that you've done and the time and the time it takes. Uh, but they can find me online at uh, TamaraAlexander.com, T-A-M-E-R-A, -E um, and um, on Facebook and Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. I mean, you know, I think we have all the all the bases covered. But uh, but yeah, I just I I'm so grateful for my readership and for um, for the last. 15, 16 years of, no, 17 now going on. Wow. Oh my word. Um, yeah. So of, of doing this, something I never thought, never thought I'd do in my life. So it's nice. Yeah, but God did. God, God did. did. And he was God preparing did. you, even as that little girl in Germany in the back of that VW bug. <laughs> even then. I know, isn't it? That's, that's one of the, that's one of the many great things about, about getting older is you do, you look back and you're able to see the twists and turns in life. Sometimes not always, but a lot of time you think, ah, ha, ha, ha. Uh -huh. I know yes. you said no. I know why you said no to that. Now even I do. Yeah. I kicked and screamed, you know, but God yes. is so good. He's so gracious. So faithful. He is. He yeah. is. Yeah. Well, thank you again. And thank you everyone for listening. I'm Eva Marie Everson. My expert today was Tamara Alexander and I will see you next time.